You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Insurance Columnist and Financial Color Commentator. And today we're talking about 162 double bonus, but this time we're talking about policy loans and how it works with the 162. Wow, we're talking about the employer actually loaning you the taxable event money that you're due. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I am Steve Savant, your host, and we're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's Largest Fountain, and day three with Ken Davis. Welcome to the show, Ken. Hey, Stephen. Great to see you again. Of course, as you've, if you missed any of our shows, we always tell you, try to watch them in sequence because we do kind of teach it that way. We do mm -hmm. the show that sure. way. So if you missed Monday and Tuesday's show, really, Today's show would be really strange to listen to if you haven't watched. So hop out to our site, www.brokersalliance.com. As soon as you come to our homepage, you'll see on-demand video. Click on it, go to our archives, and watch Monday and Tuesday's show on 162. Get caught up. And they're only 15-minute yeah, shows, it's, so it it's doesn't quick. take much long. It's worth the read to walk through it because there's mechanics here. And remember, a lot of things we talk about, whether it's sample documents, whether it's Innsmark illustrations that we use. I hope I get a little plug for them. <laughs> if I or any of the other things we use to support, we send that to you. Just write me, the biz at brokersalliance.com, and we'll send it on your way. Ken, today we're talking about now this is a little out there because most people say, well, I knew 162. Mm -hmm. And they saw the Tuesday show, got an email that says, Oh, I knew 162 double bonus. I knew that. But now that was the easy part. Now let's talk about how the the actual employer says. Well, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure I want to bonus him the the taxes due. I mean, that's his problem, right? Mm -hmm. But now we have a carrier, AXA, who's come up with an idea called their battle plan. The battle plan fits so perfect in a 162. And again, you can use their IUL or their their uh, VUL. You could, I guess, you could use their fix if you'd want to, if, if that's mm -hmm. your your taste. Mm -hmm. But what they've done is they're actually loaning the money. The employer's loaning the employee the money on the tax. And they've set this up so they can be paid at retirement in a lump sum or amortized, depending upon how they want to do it. When we talk about employer, this is another whole other strategy. I like this because now this is another way to tie. Because remember, we talked about the flexibility and portability sure, of 162. Sure, sure. And so the employer says, guy, this guy could walk on me, mm -hmm. right? Well, here's one way that, here's one option. We're going to give a big one on Friday. Here's one option to tie him down. I'm going to loan that money to them. Right. And, and I just want to tell our, our listeners that a lot of this sounds kind of convoluted and, and, and kind of difficult to put your arms around it. So let me just simplify for it. The elements really are, you know, the premium and then the tax. So the question now that we're addressing and all these variations on a theme that we're going to be discussing is how to pay for the employee's portion of the tax. And in this particular case, the employer now, in addition to making the premium payment, is now going to give cash to the employee to pay the tax, but it's not going to be compensation. It's going to be a loan from the employer to the employee. And that's, it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about different kinds of loans and repayments and restrictions and all that kind of stuff, which, which can get a bit confusing, but, but just boil it all down. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, AXA says, uh, just loan your key employee this money. Okay and then the employee is going to go out and pay their taxes with it. Okay. Now, what's happening there? There's some key elements. The employer is no longer getting a deduction for this cat, what they used to pay mm -hmm. on a double bonus as a cash bonus, right? Yeah, they only get it on the compensation itself. The That's premium. right. The premium gets deductible, but now the loan, loans are not deductible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're giving up a tax benefit to loan it. But what are they gaining? Well, the employee has an incentive to stay with them because frequently what they'll do is they will give them an extra bonus, an exiting bonus, 5, 10, 20 years down the line, mm -hmm. that then pays off that loan. And it's not the loan, it's the loan plus accrued interest oh, yeah. that's building and compounding over time that the employee owns. Now, from the employee standpoint, it's kind of cool because we know that deferral benefits our clients, right? Well, there's a deferral going on. The employee is not having to pay the tax now. They're paying the tax 5, 10, 20 years into the future allowing that policy to grow and build and the internal uh, penalties to go away and, and write it about the right time, say 15, 20 years in the future, they built up all this really nice cash value. Now they can hopefully, if with good performance, relatively easily pay back the employer and then have money to live on in the retirement. So they just take a big bon you know, loan or, mm -hmm. or withdrawal in the first year 
repay the uh, employer. Or the other alternative there is the employer just says, okay, we'll build this loan and you own it, owe it to us uh, if you walk out the door. But if you stay with us 15, 20 years or to 65 mm -hmm. or whatever's right, we'll pay you an exiting bonus that pays all that off for mm -hmm. you. So th there's kind of a golden handcuffs kind of a situation could, there. Could the employer f just forgive the loan? Yes, and that's another variation on the theme and say, okay, uh, we will uh, forgive the loan at that point in time. And so the employee, all that cash value, they walk with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, your internal rates of return, your rate of return on the cash for the employee mm -hmm. is going to be infected, whether it's a loan, whether it's a double bonus, whether it's a, a, a second bonus at retirement to pay that loan off. So there's so the all company, those variations. But if they forgive it now, isn't that ordinary income tax to the That's employee? That's right. Then? So now that is that becomes mm -hmm. compensation again. Let's say it's eighty thousand dollars of of uh, well, let's say a hundred thousand of deferred loans and, and interest. They say to the employee, "We're forgiving this." Well, forgiveness is the same in the tax law as actually mm -hmm. giving them the cash. Okay, the loan has been forgiven. They have to show it in, and sometimes the employers will even go the step further and say, "We'll give you that extra cash bonus mm -hmm. to pay for the tax on the tax." It's one of those silly iterative calculations that are always kind of well. I like the flexibility, the though. I, I think it's flexible. And we have, we've shown this on different formats, whether it's Innsmark or carriers have their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, built inside yeah. their policies. So now the, the employer can pay the tax. Now he can even loan the tax, I think. See, to me, I just like the flexibility of being able to look at different avenues. And I think the employer kind of says, I might give up the deduction because now I've kind of tied the employee to me right. by making this loan. Right. Remember, you can contact me at the biz at brokersalliance.com. That's just the biz at brokersalliance.com or call me 1 800 290 7226. And you can watch this show and all our shows right on www.brokersalliance.com. We come back, we're going to talk about policy loans because you're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Companies in our business are always touting service, products, and underwriting. And we do that too. But here's the difference. Now enter the world of the elite producer with a value package that cuts us out of the pack, a BD that approves social media marketing of non-FINRA products and doesn't take an override. With the best competition desk in the industry, and for our loyal producers, a true group health plan. No one offers that. Brokers Alliance does. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savannah. I'm with Ken Davis. And remember, before moving forward with anything we talk about, because we're talking about tax strategies, we're using a 162. Always check in with your tax advisor, and if you're FINRA licensed, always check in with your compliance officer. And speaking of compliance officers, remember, again, if you're looking for a broker-dealer, our broker-dealer is very, very, uh, what I would call, sympathetic to non-FINRA communication. If you're talking about products, you want to tweet, blog, write an article, they're pretty pretty okay with that, and they don't take a haircut on any of that product. And on top of that, I think their E&O and their application fees are very much in the game, very competitive. If you want to talk to me about that, just say, Steve, I'm interested, write me at thebiz at brokersalliance.com. You know, when we're looking at 162 double bonus, and now the employer has now a little bit of a handcuff. Now we're gonna talk about a big handcuff at the end of the week. Sure. But we're just talking about another little tidbit right. for the employer to kind of hang this guy on because actually it's the employee's money, his policy. This is a kind of way to touch it. But now we're talking about loans. Now we talk about loans, Ken, and let me tell you, I don't want to get so deep that I'm sitting there in a cruel land today, but I have to address it because everybody talks about zero net cost loans wash loans, spread loans. If you're using whole life, direct recognition loans. If you're using indexed, arbitrage, or participating, although I think that confuses a lot of people with between index loans and using whole life, because mm -hmm, the phrase mm -hmm. participating. Mm -hmm. Then we're talking about, is it current company practice? Is it what? Contractually guaranteed. Is it a fixed rate? No, it's a variable rate. I mean, we are in an inventory of measuring. I used to be able to just say, it's a loan. 
Now I have to say, is it current company practice or contractual? Is it fixed or is it variable? Is it zero net, <laughs> I mean, wash loans, spread loans, direct recognition loans, arbitrage loans? I mean, Ken, I, I, I have to manage it now. Well, we're gonna need C-3PO around to do oh, all the, the translation for all this stuff. Uh, and, and we can help with people, people with mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. One of the things I wanna point out before I forget to do so, these loans to the employee under the law, they, they have to charge interest on those mm -hmm. loans, okay? So the employee has to pay for that. And there's another variation on a the theme is either the employee you know, pays out of pocket, which is fairly nominal, or the employer uh, can choose to pay that for them and then that is compensation deductible and then taxable to the employee. So you can see all these variations mm -hmm. on a the theme. But if you're gonna make loans, or they're, the employee owes interest on that. And has it has to, to be it. a reasonable rate too. The IRS is going to say Well, yeah, the that. IRS has very specific rates that they allow. And what's interesting right now in this really low interest rate environment is it's, it's next to nothing. And so the low interest rates really work well in this type of planning. Mm -hmm. When I think about low interest rates, and we think about pulling that money out, especially during distribution, and I've given all these different possibilities, I always like to first talk, when, especially when I see a, a, a carrier trying to do the right thing, right? And I see a carrier doing zero net cost loans mm -hmm, in the contract, mm -hmm. or they're doing a very, very low wash loan mm -hmm. or a low spread loan, mm -hmm. right? I really want to be able to look at that and say, okay, it's current comp co company practice. Oh, no, it's in the contract. So I right. like that. That's the kind of good language I like. And then I've noticed that certain variable contracts now, variable loans, are tied to Moody's, or they're tied to a LIBOR rate, or they're tied to different little markers, indicators on the market. So I want to be able to be say, well, now I got to start looking at Ipsen charts on Moody's, and you know, I mean, it can get dramatic. But my point to you is, is I accumulated all this money. I want to make sure I got a good loan provision. And we we're talking about the employer doing that. And remember, either. I'm going to owe this at the end of my time, and maybe he'll give us a kind of a farewell bonus, as you've said, right. and I can pay this all off. Maybe he'll forgive it. I don't know. But we still have to think about policy loans in when we're talking about, even with Axe's really good, a very smooth battle plan. So I just want to be able to look at that and say, Ken, when I'm looking at policy loans, the one thing that scares me is as long as I keep the policy, policy in force, I'm not worried. But what happens if that policy, for whatever reason, all these loans online, what happens then? Well, that brings up a really good point, and that's really uh, what a good friend of mine calls execution risk or managing the contract, because if the loans exceed uh, the cash values, then the policy blows up, and when the policy blows up, all these deferred taxes come due. And, and so we really don't want to find our clients, uh, our agents' clients, 80, 90 mm -hmm. years old having to pay a whole bunch of taxes mm -hmm. that they thought they would never have to pay. Uh, and the other thing, you know, back to this comment about managing these, these policies is um, I actually won a case one time. You know, we, we, th this stuff seems kind of complex mm -hmm. and detailed and why do we have to learn all this stuff? Well, uh, I came up with a, a good distribution program that beat an existing policy. And so the client was gonna buy it from me, but he says, you know, this guy's my buddy from church. I really need to have to go mm -hmm. back and show this to him. So of course the buddy copies the structure I did and finds a policy that looks better. But what he didn't know is on the gear, this cracks me up, on the guaranteed page with the guaranteed numbers is a little footnote. And the footnote says, we have the right to increase the, the difference by a 200 basis point spread. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, do you really want to accumulate for 20 years, have a change in management or profitability at a company, and suddenly they say, we're not giving you that, that loan we showed you on the, on the illustration. Mm -hmm. We're going to charge 200 basis points more for the loan portion of it and credit you 200 basis points less. That isn't going to work. So I showed the client where it was guaranteed in the contract, mm -hmm. won the case and we moved on. So the, these details can make a huge difference in making the sale. To me, it is the sale. If you have a contractual guarantee and you're not using that as a close, unbelievable. And by the way, what's 200 basis points? It sounds like nothing. But to a consumer over 20 years, that could blow your policy and really cause problems. It's huge. Well, remember, you can watch this show and all our shows at www.brokersalliance.com. As soon as you come to the homepage, click on the red button. That's the buzz for the biz for the day. I'm Steve Savant. Ken Davis, see you tomorrow. The Biz is brought to you by Brokers Alliance.
a national leader in insurance products, support services, and educational workshops. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.